Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you reaching out to her. And I guess if she's not able to to make it, then she can see the recording, you know? But uh, I am honored to be here. This is amazing. Ruth, thank you so much for, for all your help. You've been amazing, really. I appreciate you. And um, I, I can't say enough about Gertrude and, and everything she's done. I'm, I'm, I am so excited and so excited to see here people that love me, that support me. So even my, my beloved friend and, and sister-in-law from Israel, she's connected here. So I'm so excited. Um, so what I wanted to talk about in, on April 7th, uh, I'm going to have a workshop of one hour in where I will discuss the seven reasons why women get attached to narcissistic men, emotionally unavailable men, energy vampires, even psychopaths. With by, by the way, we do have a... a we're not clear about a psych, what a psychopath is. Many of us think a psychopath is somebody that kills people like we see in the horror movies. There are a lot of psychopaths walking around the world um, and we think these people are okay and they are psychopaths. So basically on April 7, I will go deeper into the seven reasons why women get attached to these kind of individuals. But today we're only going to discuss one, which is the mother wound. The mother wound is what happens to many of many children like me where we are put down by our mothers we are gaslighted by our mothers gaslighting all what the gaslighting terms what it means is that our feelings are being dismissed or we are told that's nothing what are you talking about what why are you making such a big deal why are you crying like that was nothing that's dismissing our feelings. The mother wound is created when we are denied our feelings, we are dismissed, we are not mirror. Mirroring is so important for a human being, for a child that's crucial. Mirroring is when a child falls down and a mother says, oh baby, I'm sorry that you fell down, are you okay? Can I help you with this? That's mirroring, that's when children learn to identify with themselves, right? And to actually see, oh, okay, so yeah, I fell down. So, uh, okay, so my mommy's doing this. So that means, yeah, it's supposed to, I'm supposed to heal. That mirroring is crucial. That's when a child learns to connect with herself, right? So when we are not mirror, when we are told, oh, shut up, what are you talking about? Why are you making such a big deal out of this? When we, when our parents do that, when our mothers do that consistently, because maybe one day our mom is frustrated, or overwhelmed, and she does it one time. But when it is done consistently, the child learns to disconnect from him or herself, right? So... Mother wound also happens when um, we feel that our mother loves us a lot less than what she loves other siblings, right? When uh, we see her love, devotion, and everything for other children. Now, somebody very wise said one time, I don't know who it is, but this quote is unbelievably helpful. It says the only true existence a human being has is between birth and nine years of age. After that, all we're doing is recreating the patterns or relieving the same story, of course, unless we decide to heal. So what does that tell you? If between zero and nine years of age, you didn't have an emotionally available, emotionally attuned mirroring mother who supported you, who loved you unconditionally, you're going to recreate that life in, for the rest of your life. Again, unless we work on that. So what happens? We're going to repeat the patterns. Now, our mothers are the ones that teach us 
all about relationship. Everything that we know about relationship, human relationships in the world towards our future husbands or partners, towards our brothers and sisters, towards our bosses, every human relationship we have, we have learned that from our mothers. So if we had dysfunction from our mothers, if we didn't learn these things, if we didn't feel mirror, emotionally connected, emotional availability, we're going to recreate these patterns. What happens? The woman like me, that was not connected to her mother, that suffered the mother wound, we're going to recreate this functionality. We're going to feel so attracted to emotionally unavailable men because those men are mirroring mom. We're going to feel so sexually aroused by men who are emotionally unavailable. We're going to find them charming because they're reminding us subconsciously to our home. Now, obviously a child that has been raised with disconnect from mom, right? What did this char child learn? It learned to not be authentic because what happens is when our mom is not emotionally available, we start fighting for mom's attention. We want to be better than anybody. We want to, we, becomes our, we become our mom's best friend, our mom's body. We are doing and doing and doing to gain mom's approval at the cost of ourselves. And what happens? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> what happens? We then are completely disconnected from us. Now, there are two basic human needs. So basic, they're, they're like crucial for a human being to grow up secure and healthy emotionally. Number one, attachment. Number two, authenticity. So what happens is the minute we are, Think of this. The minute we suffer from the mother wound, we have a completely insecure attachment. We don't have a secure attachment. We're insecure. Does mom love me? Am I being good enough? Number one, we are growing up with an insecure attachment. Number two, authenticity. We have no authenticity. We have become a puppet. We have become whatever mom wants me to be so I can gain her love. And guess what happened? Trauma is not what happens to you. What happens to you, whatever experience you could have that's traumatic, a divorce, um, suffering from the mother wound, sexual, emotional, physical abuse, verbal abuse, all those things are traumatic experiences. Trauma is what happens to you inside of you. Now, the loss of yourself is trauma, is basically the essence of trauma. So if first of all, we have an insecure attachment because we didn't have mom's unconditional love and approval. And second of all, we have no authenticity. Exactly. Trauma is what happens inside of you. Exactly. So we have no authenticity because we are becoming whatever mom wants us to be so we can fit in, so we can be loved. We have lost the two most basic things of a human being, secure attachment and the ability to be authentic. So what happens? The consequence of that, if we don't realize it, learn it and start working on it, the consequence of that is we are extremely attracted to emotional vampires, narcissistic men, uh, psychopaths, dismissive avoidance, which is a form of attachment style, the type of men that loves you today and tomorrow don't bother me. I want you now. I don't want you later. Right? So we are extremely attracted to these men because these men remind us of the trauma of the house. We also become addicted. 
addicted to the drama, believe it or not. It sounds incredible, but we do. We become emotionally addicted to the drama because it reminds us of home. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Cher. I appreciate you. Um, we become so addicted to the drama. It's, it's unbelievable. We become addicted to the up and down. It's like, it's almost like a drug. Okay. And we pick up addictions like me. We pick up addictions, different kinds of addictions. First of all, we're definitely addicted to the relationship to try to, we're going to fight to win the love of that man. We're going to bend over backwards to please that man. But as those of us who have suffered abuse, we realize that no matter what you do, nothing is going to make you win the love of that man because he's a dysfunctional human being just like we are and we need healing, right? So we're going to do everything. We're going to bend over backwards. We're going to like uh, become the best woman in the world for that man. We're going to do exactly what we did in our childhood. We're going to forget about ourselves. We're going to put this man first. We're going to obsess over him. Um, in any relationship with parents, we're going to deny ourselves constantly, do whatever our parents want us to do. Our, 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 a, how do you call it? A boss that happens a lot. It happened to me a lot, right? Uh, we're going to do whatever our boss says. If we have to stay till two in the morning, like I did many times, regardless of what happened to my personal life, I would do it because my boss wanted me to do it. So it's like we live a life completely and utterly disconnected from ourselves. And our escape is the addiction, the addiction to the relationship, the dysfunctionality of the relationship. But then we have other addictions. We have addictions to food, like me, addictions to pornography, gambling, buying clothes and things that we cannot afford, but we continue to buy. We can't stop. Addiction, uh, uh, addictions to, I mean, alcohol, drugs, everything and anything that we could so that we can escape from our reality for, for some time and then come back to it. But as we all know, addictions cause a second issue, which is we have to deal with whatever the consequence is afterwards, right? So it's, you know. So the women that suffer from the mother wound are going to also be unable to connect with their feelings, their intuition. Uh, they're going to be so attractive to charming men, which is one of the things I always tell my clients. When you see a charming guy, oh, he's so charming. I can almost assure you that's a narcissist or an, or an emotional vampire run charming equals emotional vampire. You rather have a partner who is down to earth, who is disliked by some and liked by some, and you don't feel this thing that this man is like overwhelmingly charming. So Anyway, you're also a caretaker, a fixer upper. You love projects. You love to get involved with men that need fixing, that need you. Uh, so you can become the one that's giving, fighting for the relationship, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we heal this trauma? How do we heal from the mother wound? The first thing that we need to do is we need to reconnect with ourselves. Reconnection with us is what we didn't have. What we haven't had perhaps since our childhood. We have been connected to all the people's need. We have lived our lives to fix, to love, to overgive, to put others first. It is time for us to reconnect with us. How do we do that? First of all, taking time for ourselves. Like I always tell my clients, first thing in the morning has to be your time. And let me tell you, if you have to get up at five in the morning to do this, it is so worth it. Before you attend anybody in your family, before you grab your phone, 
before you start working, before you start your workout, take time for yourself to connect with yourself. If you pray, time to pray. If you meditate, meditate. I have a routine where I do meditations first, then I pray, then I journal. Journal is amazing. Why is it good? First of all, because it's one of the three ways in which you connect with your, with your subconscious. And all trauma you've lived in your life is in your subconscious. So if you write, you are connecting with your subconscious. Hypnosis is another way to connect, the most powerful way in the world. And then you have meditation. So journaling. And then after that, then I go to the gym, come back, take a shower. So I can get up at five or six in the morning and I don't start my day till 10 o'clock. And all that time is for me to connect. I'm not telling you to do that, but you can set up half an hour, 45 minutes for yourself in the morning. Also, when you are asked to do something, go inside yourself and feel whether you want to do this or not. If you need to tell the person, you know what, let me think about it and I'll come back to you. Do it. If you're leaving or have relationships with narcissistic men or emotionally unavailable men, they're not going to like that. They want an answer right now. And they want to know if you don't give them an answer right now, why don't you give me an answer right now? You don't have to explain yourself to anybody unless it's a police officer or a judge. You don't. You don't have to explain or give a reason why to anybody in the world unless it's an authority. Okay? So, unless it's an authority. So, basically, uh, reconnect with yourself. Feel your body reconnect with your body. Okay? Super, super important. Mourn the mother that you didn't have. Many of us grew up feeling our mothers are the next thing next to God. And yes, they're amazing. I adore my mother. My mother asked me for forgiveness. We had an amazing relationship before she passed away. Yet that doesn't take away the fact that I suffer the mother wound. And I had to heal from that. So mourn the pain of the mother you didn't have reparent yourself. Now you're an adult. Now you can become the mother you didn't have. Last but not least, I would highly recommend hypnosis. Hypnosis to me is the holy grail of healing. Nothing helps more than hypnosis because all of our trauma, all of our painful experiences are located in our subconscious. So in order for us to heal that, we have to go into our subconscious, right? And reprogram that story. And there's specific ways of doing it. So I encourage each and every one of you to, um, to heal, to do the work that you need to do to heal from the mother wound, because it is a very deep wound that draws us, makes us a magnet to narcissistic and selfish men and we feel attracted to them. So with this, I end this session. I thank every one of you here for attending. And if you need any help with this, this is what I do. I, it's my passion. I help women heal from this and I could be reached at helpme at embeddingonyou.com. Thank you.